All right, hey everyone, I'm Justin Diamond, and tonight it's going to be chapter three of my book, Giant Special Tokyo Love. I call this chapter, Mite. Daddy, look, a flower, Zelda said, pointing out the window next to the kitchen table. The entire Diamond family, Sora, Zelda, and Justin were eating dinner. Sora and Justin had all but finished their meals. Zelda was taking the slow train. Typical four-year-old, she was distracted by all the minor details in life. I vaguely recalled that there was a bush just outside the window. It was blooming, wasn't it? I was almost sure that it was because I remembered playing with Zelda and the neighbor's children outside just the other day. But what threw me for a loop was, how could Zelda see a flower in this light? The sun was gone, and when I glanced out the window to oblige her, there was only shadow, not a trace of flower. As I was distracted, I saw Zelda move closer to me out of the corner of my eyes. I didn't flinch. There was nothing threatening about the gesture. It was simply unusual for her to invade my personal space like that, especially during a meal. Ever so lightly, she kissed my cheek. I smiled. When I turned to look at her, my eyes asking why had she given me such a gesture of unsolicited love, she simply smiled and tilted her head to the side. This is how they do it to you, I thought. This is how your children melt your heart. The lines of her face, unique to her youth, were not too much like mine or her mother's. She was a gorgeous mix of the two. She, gig she giggled, and in that giggle, I understood that she was enjoying the idea that she had distracted Daddy, that she had tricked me into exposing my cheek for a kiss. Daddy, look, a tree, she said, this time pointing to a spot on the plain wooden sliding door that joined the computer room to the dining area. I knew good and well that there was absolutely nothing even remotely resembling a tree in that direction. But without missing a beat, I played along. A tree? Where? I asked, exaggerated. I turned my head just enough to present my cheek to her yet again, and even leaned towards her a bit so she wouldn't have to stretch too far out of her seat. A moment later, the kiss came again. We exchanged glances while Zelda giggled at her achievement. I took a drink of water, and Zelda responded by scooping another bit of rice into her mouth with her chopsticks. She held the bowl up to her mouth, as was proper Japanese manners. Come on, baby. It's late. You gotta go to bed soon, I said. But in truth, she didn't look like she was anywhere near tired enough to sleep. Pajamas and bedtime. It's very late, Sora said, getting up from the table and shuffling off into the bedroom to lay out Zelda's pajamas. By the time Zelda finished her meal, she had tricked Daddy into foolishly turning his head uh, half a dozen times to look at everything from a cucumber to a butterfly. But surprisingly, after dinner, she didn't even put up a fight getting into her pajamas, brushing her teeth, and slipping under the covers of the futon with Mommy. I was there to offer my much faster putting baby to sleep services. Do you want Daddy to tuck you in? I asked. No, Mommy! Zelda responded. Okay, I said, disappointed. I had been looking forward to spending some quality time with Mommy that night, but... Who was I fooling? Zelda was in control of the situation. Good night, I said, and leaned down almost all the way to the tatami mat floor to kiss her good night. But at the last moment, she put her hand up and blocked my kiss. At first, I thought it was a random gesture, but when I tried to kiss her again from another angle, she moved her hand and blocked me again. I was about to go for a third angle when I heard a slight giggle, and I knew that Zelda was toying with me. Okay, okay, good night, Mommy, I said and went to kiss Sora, 
but just before my lips could reach her forehead, Zelda's tiny hand intervened. Oh? No, not even kiss mommy? Sora asked. No, Zelda said. Okay, good night, silly head, I said to Zelda. And then to Sora. Are you getting up? Some nights, all too frequently, she would fall asleep when she put Zelda to sleep. Other nights, she would get back up. I have to. I need to work, Sora said. They didn't frown at this remark. I, I simply stood up and left before my anger showed. So even if she did back, get back up, it wouldn't be to spend time with me. It would be to grade papers and to do work. Mother first, teacher second, and a wife a distant third. Maybe fourth. I left them to fall asleep, leaving the door ajar just as they liked it. It was easily my least favorite part of the day, waiting for Sora to possibly get back up and spend time with me. Where time together means something like time in the same room. In this situation, it would mean Sora working at her computer while I played WoW. But every so often, we would watch a TV show together. Rarer yet, we might even have sex. It all hinged on Sora being able to put Zelda to sleep without falling asleep herself. Who knew what went on in her mind? I was starting to think that she would probably take a nap. Anybody would after working the grueling schedule that Japan puts on its public school teachers. Since this arrangement was the status quo of our marriage, I already had plenty of time to try and work the problem from every angle. If Zelda agreed to it, I could have her sleeping in the bed in under five minutes. But I couldn't make it as fun as Mommy could. I couldn't read Japanese books to her. You know, whatever spark of charm and humor I had with Zelda, it went away once I was lying on the tatami mat with her, coaxing her to sleep. All for even just the chance of sex with Sora later. I would try... I would offer, but Mommy was clearly the champion. I wondered about the specifics of the cultural differences between American and Japanese families. When I got married, I never imagined how drastically different child-raising practices could be. Before marriage, before we had Zelda, it was given that adults would put their children to sleep and stay up late, spending time together. It seemed so right so natural. It was the way things ought to be. But not in Japan. In Japan it was a horrible abomination, or at least Sora made me feel like it was. As if only bad abusive parents did things any other way than the mommy falling to sleep with her baby. Which left me alone with plenty of time to myself to wonder if Sora really would wake up that night to judge if she would, based on a number of factors including, but not limited to, the day of the week, the stress she had at work, Zelda's resistance to going to bed, and Sora's overall mood just before bedtime. It seemed like a complicated calculus to which I had become a master speculator. Despite Zelda offering little resistance to going to bed that night, I felt that almost certainly Sora would not wake up. Sure, she said she had work to do, which always increased her chances of actually waking up to do it. But she had already mentioned that it had been a field day at school, meaning she'd had a very physical day of activity. She may have even run a relay course or something similar. No, I thought, almost certainly, she would be down and out for the count. I flipped on the TV. Maybe there is a talk show uh, with the guy I liked, Ishizuka-chan. I liked him because he wore overalls and was fat like an American. Or Gyaru Sone, the cute woman who is a professional eater. But after surfing through all of the eight channels, there was no sign of anything interesting. That only left one option to pass the time. 
Wow. It was an option I hated to take because, to some extent, it involved committing to the moment. The universal rule of law states that once I commit to the game, the chances of Sora actually waking up dramatically increase. I clicked off the TV, put the remote down, and used my mouse to double click the WOW icon. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.